Welcome to Goop Tales. Copycata and Mimic Fina? Have you heard of them? Together, they are quite the gem. They laugh and chat and play. And this they do all the day. But oh, if they decide to copy you, I'm afraid it could make you a bit blue. Chapter One Once upon a time, there was a very boisterous pair of goop twins named Copycata and Mimic Fina. The twins were full of fun and almost always in a merry mood. They were known for playing pranks on each other and the rest of the goops, all in the pursuit of a good time. They almost always dressed alike except for the color of their hats. Mimic Fina insisted that Copycata wear a purple hat instead of a blue one. She didn't want to be copied on everything. The twins could often make the other goops laugh until they fell down, barely able to breathe. <laughs> Once they staged a puppet show and invited the Screener twins, Screener and Screenalina, the Mads, Mad Adam and Madam, Wonty and Why Naughty, and Touch Him and Take Him. It was a puppet show for twins. The puppet show had two puppets. One was voiced by Mimic Fina, and it was a puppet of Kudi Kanto. The other puppet was voiced by Copycata, and it was a puppet of Excitabelle. The show began with a flourish of dramatic music, and then Kudi Kanto showed up and began to walk along while singing. My name is Kudi Kanto. I am kind and oh so fun. But if a Kudi were to touch me, I would have to run. What a glorious day it is, Kudi Kanto said as he walked along. Then Excitabelle appeared. She was jumping up and down and moving about. Oh, Kudi Kanto, guess what? She called out. What? said Kudi Kanto. Oh, oh, I just can't believe it. I was just visiting a lake and it was so funny. I saw a lot of geese and they got so upset if you come too close. They make their wings huge and they start hissing and sticking out their neck at you. She exclaimed very excitedly. Oh yes, geese do that. I don't like that. They could have cooties, replied the cootie counto puppet. Oh, you mean you don't like it when they're like this, said the excitable puppet as she waved her arms about, stuck out her neck, and then ran after Cootie Kanto and gave him a huge hug. Stop, stop, gross, don't touch me, screamed Cootie Kanto in a horrified voice as he struggled to free himself of Excitabelle's embrace. All of the twins watching the puppet show burst out into laughter. <laughs> they all had a good laugh at Cootie Kanto's expense. Then Mimic Fina and Copycata stood up and took a bow. When Mimic Fina and Copycata were like this, they were very funny. But there were times when the rest of the goops didn't think the twins were funny at all. Sometimes they took things too far. Mimic Fina was a very good mimic and she loved to mimic everyone. She even carried around a little notebook that she used to take notes if she saw someone or something that she wanted to mimic. Copycata, on the other hand, was a big copycat. She copied lots of things, 
and she even copied her twin sister, Mimic Fina. Copycata carried around a Polaroid camera so that she could snap photos of the things she wanted to copy. She loved how Very Vain put sparkling silver strands in her hair, so she took a photo of it. She even snuck a photo of Know-It-All's homework so she could copy it. She knew that Know-It-All was very smart and probably had all the correct answers. On a very sunny spring day, Mimic Fina and Copycata met up with their friend Runner to go in search of a rare blue butterfly. It was said that if you could capture a blue butterfly in Goop World and then release it at midnight, that the moon would turn blue. Copycata, Mimic Fina, and Runner had tried many times to capture a blue butterfly, and they weren't successful. But they didn't give up. The twins liked to go butterfly hunting with Runner because he could run very fast, and they felt he had the best chance of catching a butterfly. He would never, ever stop running. The three of them walked along through a sunny field and saw many gold and black butterflies flitting about, but they weren't interested in those butterflies. They spent the entire day running about the field and laughing while Mimic Fina entertained them. She even mimicked Miss Wigglebutt for them. Now, class, did you know that it's very dangerous to go butterfly hunting? These are wild insects and they could attack at any moment. Both Runner and Copycata burst out laughing. <laughs> Suddenly, their laughter was interrupted as a lone blue butterfly flitted by them. Look over there, whispered Mimic Fina excitedly as she pointed to the blue butterfly who was moving along. Runner immediately hopped to his feet and began to chase the butterfly. Up and down the hills he went, coming so close, but never close enough. The butterfly always escaped him at the last moment, until Runner finally tripped on his shoelaces and fell flat on his face. Mimic Fina and Copycata both burst out laughing, <laughs> and then they began to imitate Runner. Catch me, catch me if you can. I'm a blue butterfly, called out Mimic Fina as she ran along flapping her arms. Copycata chased after her and said, I will catch you. My name is Runner. Copycata chased Mimic Fina up a hill and grabbed her in fits of laughter. <laughs> in doing so, she tripped over a rock that slid down the hill, leaving a large, gaping black hole in its place. Copycata fell into the hole, and as she did, she grabbed the edge of Mimic Fina's jumper, pulling them both down into the darkness. Chapter Two the twins fell into the darkness and landed quickly on soft, damp earth. Both of them looked around to blackness in every direction. Copycata, whispered Mimic Fina as she grasped her sister's hand. Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to land us here. I don't know what happened, Copycata whispered back. It's okay. At least we're together. Let's figure out how to get out of here, replied Mimic Fina. The twins began to feel around in the dark. Everything felt like dirt, and there didn't seem to be a way out. Keep feeling up and down the walls. Don't leave any spot untouched, said Copycata, who was feeling responsible for getting them into this mess. The two of them touched every square inch of earth they could find. 
until finally Copycatta put her hand on one of the walls and it caved in a little. Here, she said as she held Mimic Fina's hand up to the spot. Mimic Fina put her hand in what was now a small hole and she felt around. It seemed like a tunnel because she could stick her whole arm in and still not feel the end. This is our way out, exclaimed Mimic Fina with relief. The twins widened the tunnel so they could both fit in. Then they hopped in and flung dirt behind them until finally they saw a crack of sunlight. Look, said Copycatta as she began to dig even faster. Within minutes, the two of them were looking up into a blue sky full of sunshine. We did it, they said simultaneously as they hugged. Then Copycatta hoisted Mimic Fina up out of the hole and Mimic Fina turned around and reached down to pull Copycatta up. The two of them stood in the daylight and looked around. They were not back in the meadow chasing butterflies with Runner. They saw a huge rock in the distance in a pond of water. They were surrounded by earth-colored rock that was in layers with walls around it. Something about this place was very familiar, and something about it was very ominous. What is this place? Whispered Mimic Fina as she wrote down some notes. I don't know, but I, I feel like I've seen it before, but I can't place it. It's so strange. It looks vaguely familiar, said Copycatta as she snapped a photo. I feel the same. I feel like I've seen something like this before, but I can't remember, said Mimic Fina. The twins turned around, taking in the whole scene, and then suddenly, Mimic Fina turned to Copycatta. I think we're in a zoo, she said. Oh, that's it! That's it! said Copycatta in agreement as she stared at her Polaroid. Oh, I do love a zoo, she continued. I love the animals, but I don't see any, she sighed as she looked around. It was true. They were in a zoo, but there were no animals to be seen. Yet. There were plants in the distance, but the twins couldn't see beyond them. For now, all they could see were the surrounding rock terraces and water pool. Well, let me give you an animal or two, said Mimic Fina, as she began to mimic a peacock. She spread her arms out and fluffed her hat and her little jumper and paraded about proudly. (coughs) I'm so beautiful. Who am I? She asked. A peacock or maybe very vain, said Copycatta. And both the twins burst (laughs) into fits of giggles. Okay, okay. Now, who am I? Asked Mimic Fina as she made oinking sounds and rolled around on the dirty ground. (laughs) You're a pig, or dirty Gus, Copycatta said, and then burst out laughing (laughs) while the two of them (laughs) fell to the ground. Mimic Fina mimicked several more animals and continued to delight her sister. (laughs) Then she imitated a tiger. She got on her hands and knees and began to crawl with long, graceful movements. Then she roared. (sighs) Who am I now? She laughed. Copycatta scrunched up her face as if thinking. Hmm, she sighed. Let me give you a hint again, said Mimic Fina as she roared again. Only this time, her roar was overpowered by the roar of a live tiger from very nearby. The twins whipped their heads around and stared down at a pool of water 
where a splendid tiger was standing with his jaws stretched wide open. He stared them straight in the eye and let out another enormous roar. Chapter 3 The twins stared at the tiger and then at each other in horror. Copycata held up her Polaroid and took a quick photo because she couldn't help herself. Let's get out of here! The twins screeched. Then Copycata grabbed Mimicthena's hand and pulled her into another water pool that was right behind them. They dove in without hesitation. Once underwater, the twins looked at each other. They didn't want to go back up to the surface, but they couldn't stay there either. Mimic Fina looked around and spotted a small opening in the pool they were in. It was some sort of tunnel. She grabbed Copycata and pulled her towards the opening. The tiger's foot stepped into the pool just a few feet from the twins. With no time to waste, the twins squeezed into the tiny tunnel and kept moving. Try as he might, the tiger could not fit. All he could do was swipe his paw at the twins as they disappeared into the watery tunnel. The twins squirmed and squished their way through the tunnel as their hearts beat loudly. Finally, they popped up and out of an opening and stuck their heads into what seemed to be a giant jungle. Look, said Copycata. Wow, where are we? And where is that tiger? Asked Mimic Fina as she peered back at the small hole that she had just emerged from half expecting to see a tiger paw pop out of it, but it did not. Where is that tiger? said a voice. Mimic Venus stared at Copycata, a bit annoyed. Are you copying me? she asked. Are you copying me? said the voice. Mimic Fina was ready to grow very irritated with her sister, but she noticed that Copycata wasn't even moving her mouth. So she said, Where is that Big, fierce tiger. Where is that big, fierce tiger? Came the voice again. Then Mimic Fina scrunched up her entire face and let out a gurring sound as she spoke. Who is that? She grunted. Who is that? Replied the voice. Copycata burst out laughing. <laughs> she was very entertained by Mimic Fina getting a taste of her own medicine. Someone was mimicking her very well. Stop laughing, growled Mimic Fina. Stop laughing, stop laughing, came the voice again. At this point, Mimic Fina felt she would explode with frustration. She held her finger to her mouth and indicated for Copycata to be quiet. Then she grabbed her hand and quietly started to walk around the jungle they were in. The twins turned a corner and looked up to see two macaw parrots sitting high on a tree branch, staring down at them with knowing looks. One had a vibrant yellow body with bright blue wings, and the other had a red upper body and head with green and blue wings. They were both spectacular. Mimic Fina burst into a huge smile. She had heard about macaws, but she had never encountered one. Mimic Fina had met her match. <laughs> you got me, she burst out laughing. You got me, replied the yellow macaw. I think we're kindred spirits, said Mimic Fina. Kindred spirits, yes, kindred spirits, said the macaw. We know how to mimic and copy with the best of them said Copycata. Mimic and copy, mimic and copy, said the red-headed parrot. Are we in a zoo? asked Mimic Fina. Zoo, New York City Zoo, 
replied the parrots together. The twins smiled. Now they were really communicating with the macaws. New York City Zoo? How do we exit the zoo? We've already been chased by a tiger, asked Mimic Fina. Chased by a tiger, chased by a tiger, said the red-headed macaw. Yes, we have a photo of him, and now we need to get out of here because who knows who else may come for us. How do we get out? Photo, way out is way in, replied the two parrots in unison. We have to go back to the tiger, asked Copycata in a very hesitant voice. Photo, back to tiger, back to tiger. Photo, back to tiger, back to tiger, said the macaws. The twins looked at each other in a mixture of fear and bewilderment. These birds, I can't tell if they're copying us or helping us. It's annoying, said Copycata. Photo, copy or helping, copy or helping. Annoying, annoying, said the macaws together. Copycata and Mimic Fina stared at each other in frustration. They both knew that this was how the other goops must feel when Copycata and Mimic Fina wouldn't stop mimicking and copying them. Copycata sighed, and then she said in a very confident voice, So, we must go back to the tiger in order to get out of here? Photo, back to tiger. Photo, back to tiger, said the macaws together. This time, they were annoyed. Chapter four, the twins stood still and neither of them uttered a sound. They didn't want to hear the parrots mimic them. They knew what they had to do. They just didn't know the details. We need to figure out how to get back to the tiger. We can't go through that water tunnel again. We'd have to go against the water and then we'd be trapped at the other end. And why do those birds keep saying photo, said Mimic Fina. Copycata cupped her hands to her mouth and called up to the parrots who were quietly sitting above them. We need your help. No more mimicking, please. How do we get out of here? How do we enter the tiger's den? How do we escape it again? The yellow bird cocked his head and looked down at her quizzically. Photo, climb tree, drop in, mimic predator, out again. That's all, said the parrot in a very parrot-like voice. Copycata turned to mimic Fina and repeated exactly what the parrot had said, but in a very different tone. She was quite unsure of what it all meant. Photo, climb tree, Mimic predator, out again? That's what I said, said the parrot from above in a very saucy voice. And then it added, tick tock. Hmm, gasped Mimic Fina. I think that parrot is saying, hurry up. Indeed, but we need to figure out this riddle, said Copycata, as she held up the photo she had taken of the tiger. Look! she said, pointing to a sign on a cave behind the tiger. It said, exit. That's it. We need to get to that exit. The exit in the tiger's den? Asked Mimic Fina with a lump in her throat. Yes, but we have to be ready to scare him. We must mimic the predator of the tiger. Do they even have predators? Asked Mimic Fina, thinking aloud. Not many, but a bear or an elephant could take a tiger. I learned that from Miss Wigglebutt, Copycata said proudly. That means we have to mimic an elephant or a bear? Mimic Fina asked in disbelief. Mimic predator, tick tock, came the parrot's voice from above, almost as if he were taunting them. Mimic Fina looked at Copycata and rolled her eyes. We can do this. We can mimic an elephant, she whispered to her sister. 
Then the twins kicked into high gear. They knew they didn't have time to waste, and there was no more time for dilly-dallying. Climb tree is our first instruction, said Copycata, as she eyed the giant tree trunk in front of them. Immediately, they began to scale the trunk of the tree that held the parrots. The two of them shimmied up the trunk and came to the branch with the parrots on them. They held the parrots' gaze for a moment and then kept on moving. They shimmied over to a long branch that reached out across a divide that separated the tiger's den. This is it, said Copycata as she scooted along the branch with Mimic Fina behind her. The twins got to the end of the branch and looked below. They could see the tiger lounging by his lazy river. He seemed to be asleep. His tail flicked once or twice to swat flies, but other than that, he didn't move. Right beyond the tiger was the exit sign. That is where we are headed, whispered Copycata. Mimic Fina nodded. Are you ready to mimic an elephant? Asked Copycata. Mimic Fina nodded again. It's now or never then. Let's use this vine to swing down, said Copycata as she held up a tree vine. The two of them hopped on and swung down into the tiger's den as quietly as they could. They landed on the ground, keeping one eye on the tiger, who was still sleeping. Ever so slowly, they began to creep around to the exit sign that was just beyond the tiger. Slowly, slowly they went. The tiger continued to sleep. When they were just feet away from the tiger, he stirred and the twins froze, waiting to see if he would drift back to sleep. His eyes remained closed and he turned on his back to scratch it against the warm stone surface. He purred softly. Then he lazily opened an eye and just as he was about to close it, he caught sight of the twins. In a flash, he was up and on his feet in an attack position ready to pounce. Now, said Copycata. And just before the tiger could move another muscle, Mimic Fina opened her mouth. She trumpeted like an elephant. It was the most perfect mimic she had ever done. Even Copycata was blown away and looked around for an elephant. The tiger was so startled he too looked for an elephant. It was at that moment that Copycata grabbed Mimic Fina's hand and made a mad dash for the exit. They ran into a deep, dark hole. Mimic Fina took a quick look behind her as they ran further into the darkness, and she was sure she saw the golden eye of a tiger staring down the tunnel. They ran and ran in darkness until they saw a bright light from above and felt soft earth beneath their feet. Copycata climbed up into the light, reaching down to help mimic Vina. They emerged above ground to the exact spot they had fallen in. They watched as a blue butterfly flitted by. We did it, they said to each other. Let's go find Runner. We need to tell him everything, especially how I trumpeted like an elephant, said Mimic Fina. Yes, let's, replied Copycata. The two of them set off to find Runner, but he was nowhere to be found. He was running through Rift Valley, Kenya, but that is a tale for another time. Hey there, it's Maria. Thanks for listening to Goop Tales. If you want to listen to another one, all you have to do is click on your screen and you can. 
And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Goop Tales and you'll always be notified when there's a new one. You can tag us on social media at Goop Tales on either Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to hear your questions and comments. And you can also leave me a voicemail if you go to gooptales.com and use the little prompt in the sidebar. Okay, I will see you in the next Gooptale.